so hello everyone welcome to a new video this is second part of my videos on etching uh, which is uh, a technique used in uh, fabrication so so in this video i'll be discussing about wet etching so in and in wet etching i'll be take looking in uh, detail about isotropic and uh, anisotropic wet etching so yeah let's get started so wet etching can be divided into two one is isotropic wet etching and another is anisotropic wet etching so in the first one isotropic wet etching so isotropic etching means that etching is not orientation dependent that is whether your material is 100 110 111 oriented it doesn't matter it etches everything uniformly so because of that so if i have a masking layer and a substrate then because of this etching is it is it doesn't depend on the orientation of your crystal so or your substrate or whatever you want to etch so so it will just etch every, everywhere so that is why you will have an undercut because of isotropic etching so if you if, if so you should always be expecting that so 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 in that case you should make a mask always which is smaller than your what you actually want because you will always have this undercut and uh, and that is something you will have to live with when you are doing isotropic wet etching. So, so these are the different materials you can, and these are different etchants. For for example, for silic uh, silicon oxide, the etchant is uh, buffered hydrofluoric acid. Silicon nitride, if you want to etch, then you have to, you have to use hot phosphoric acid. For polysilicon, KH or uh, ethylene diamine or uh, or pyrocatechol for aluminum you'll have to use pan so pan means it is a uh, it has the ratio of phosphoric acetic nitric acid also there is a di di water distilled water also included in this so they have to make a particular ratio of that and then uh it's aluminum for copper etching you can use the etching ferric chloride for gold aluminum or iodine used, or iodine alcohol is used so so this is basically uh, happens due to simple reaction so what happens is uh, sio2 reacts with hf and gives a salt and water so and with this what is it doing hf is actually making a different compound from that and then you can remove this particular salt and thus you can s sio2 so all of these materials actually it is in a similar manner and uh, yeah so that is so so that is what happens in isotropic wet etching so so when I'm talking about isotropic etching or anything, the selectivity of H and for desired material is very important. So, for example, HF etches silicon dioxide, but also etches silicon nitride slowly. So, if nitride is a masking material, we must be concerned with how much, how long it is exposed to the H. So, if you want to, silicon nitride is a good mask if it is for a very less time but if it is for a long time then it is not a good mask then you have to look for another one else. so this is basically the idea for any material for any etching thing your selectivity is pretty important so your etching should selectively etch only the particular material not your mask and you should choose your mask based on that your etching doesn't etch your mask so that is this is a very important idea you have to you have to remember while doing your etching also also, this is all widely used thing, so people actually know what is the desired material, what are the desired mask. You just have to search literally and do according to that. So this is a cantilever beam, so which we can make using this uh, isotopic attaching. So how is it done? So this is a top view and this is a cross section view. So I deposit a sacrificial layer. Sacrificial means you are sacrificing the material to make something to make a structure. So for example, I am depositing SiO2 on top. Okay, in the second and SiO2 is a sacrificial layer. So then what should I use? I should use HF to remove SiO2, right? So in this step, I remove uh, SiO2 and finally, uh, finally I'm real because, because by removing the sacrificial layer, I am releasing the device. So this is my device. This is, my, this is cantilever. So this is called surface micromachining where isotropic etching is used to remove sacrificial layer and make cantilever. So there is also something called why is it called surface microscopy because it is actually doing things on the surface or etching it on the surface so if i am etching the substrate then it is called or the if the substrate is significantly etched by your etcher then we will call this we will call it bulk micro machine so that is the difference between surface and bulk micro machine so in this so so i have already so this is 
I have already discussed right SiO2 using as a uh, sacrificial material and the structure I, I can use is polysilicon. So that means that the bottom but buffered uh, HF is actually selective to only SiO2 and no, and it won't edge polysilicon. So that is the basic idea. So in aluminium, I can use H using pan edge and polysilicon XF2 and and photoresist oxygen plasma. So these are oxygen plasma and XCF2 are basically not wet etching, it is actually dry etching. So this is uh, this table is basically showing that uh, about what all sacrificial materials you can use for surface micro machining or, or, or even bulk also it can. Etch. So, so, so in the last one photoresist uh, removal by photo plus oxygen plasma. So this is actually widely used and this this thing is called ashing. So so people doing lithography actually uh, widely use this thing where they can remove the photoresis using an oxygen plasma so so one so one of the major problem in surface micro machining is stiction so when using a wet release edge the surface tension during uh, drying can pull compliant beam into contact with substrate and during the final drying they can adhere firmly together that actually means that this beam well, stiction means that stiction means that your beam will come and stick to your substrate. So that is not something you want, right? So what can you do to avoid that? So I have listed four things you can use. Uh, the first is the use of self-assembled molecular uh, monolayers to coat the surface during the final rinse with a thin hydrophobic layer, reducing that also attractive force. So by that you can reduce stiction. Then the use of vapor or a dry etching release method so this is something i will be talking in my next video so about completely on dry etching so it will come there so that can also reduce friction so the third one is various drying methods freeze drying and drying with a uh, super critical that remove the liquid without permitting surface tension to act so the fourth one is temporary mechanical support of the mobile structure during release using post photoresist or some other easily removed material so it basically means that you can put a photoresist over here so like giving it a support so that it doesn't come and stick and then you can do a uh, oxygen plasma ashing and then remove the photoresist it, it is basically on uh, thinking on how you can avoid stiction and these are some of the uh, ways you can do that and uh, the other is anisotropic wet etching so what is anisotropic wet etching anisotropic wet etching means that your etching is actually uh, dependent on your crystal orientation so so that is basically the idea so so strong bases such as potassium uh, hydroxide tetramethyl ammonia hydroxide ethylene diamine pyrocatechol exhibit highly oriented dependent edge characteristics so you can see so so 100 is actually etches much faster than 111 so you get a port structure like this and th you can use a mask layer and get these beautiful structures that like this because of this orientation dependent etching and uh, another thing is you can also create like hanging beams that, like this particular mask or this particular uh, mask will be staying there and uh, also so basically if you want if you are removing the mask that will also go but if you if you just if you get want to get a v structure then you can make a mask shape like this and then get a v structure like this. that is that means that basically you're 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 etching this part which is under the mask also you would be expecting perfectly cylindrical there and here but yeah, that's not what you get when you're doing uh anisotropy getting because of the anisotropy in the that mean what is causing it so in my uh, previous video in the first part of this etching process etching process videos i have uh, actually di discussed uh, what happened so so basically the idea between 100 and 111 is that 111 plane or the atoms in the 111 plane are more tightly bound together than 100 so 100 gets etched easily compared to 111 so that is the basic idea why you get structures like this in an isotropic etching so yeah, that's all that is there in the video. Uh, please do comment uh, on on whatever you felt about the video, and uh, please subscribe if you like the video. And yeah, that's all. Thank you.